shape saturation effect is characterized by the addition of odd order harmonics that create a nice fattening up of the signal, some dynamic compression, which helps to tame the peaks, and then additionally a dynamic band limiting, which is very effective in creating a sense of dynamics in the frequency response where high sharp transients are not only limited through compression, but are also band limited through the interaction of the pre-emphasis and de-emphasis equalization in the tape process. So at low levels of saturation, the effect is very transparent, something that's really felt a bit more than heard. Here's the bypass tone. Now with tape saturation at minimum. So something that's really barely audible as an effect, but you do feel it and sense it when you're playing a bit more. As we increase the saturation, the tape system gets driven harder and will produce more odd order harmonics. Compare that with bypass. There you can hear the start of the increased harmonics in the low end and the fattening of it, and just a little bit of saturation effect on the top end. As we increase saturation further, we push the system harder and start creating more distortion products and, and get more of the compression effect. That's probably about the limits that you would be pushing a deck in a recording environment where you'd be really slamming the VU meters and wouldn't really be looking for the tape system to, to give you distortion beyond that. But we thought it would be nice to extend the range to allow that the same principles of the effect to go into further levels of saturation. So if we turn the saturation up further. <laughs> Maximum, we get a decent amount of gain here for certainly for a tape style system. But one of the nice aspects of the tape system is the dynamics of it, where at low levels the system essentially is wide band with the clean reproduction and it'll respond very nicely to dynamics where the harder inputs and attacks will benefit from the compression and the dynamic band limiting, but the lower level inputs will be uh, clean and that allows it to be very responsive to your volume control and very transparent. So we'll select a fairly high level of saturation here. Turning my guitar volume back. switch right over to my bridge pickup. So it lends itself to setting at a certain distortion level and letting your guitar volume really set the amount of drive through the system without sacrificing your tone when, when your volume's rolled back. As a, an always on effect, it's nice to have at a level where you don't really hear any saturation, But it just is fattening up your sound in a way that lends itself to kind of sweeten everything that's uh, that's before it. All right, now let's check out the saturation with a Strat that has a lot lower output than the humbuckers on that Les Paul copy. Here's our dry tone. Again, with saturation engaged at minimum, it's going to be a very subtle effect.
So there you can hear around 10 o'clock or so on the knob, it's warming up the, the sound a bit here and getting some of the, the benefits of the saturation. Definitely fattening it up there and warming it up nicely. So at saturation maximum, it's adding harmonics and dynamic compression, but doesn't really take the characteristic tone away from the instrument. That, that remains, it just is enhanced by the uh, saturation process. And turning my volume back. Keeps the tone intact and makes it nice and clean. You know, very suitable for dynamic style. In fact, actually just picking very lightly. You'll still retain the clean bass tone of your, of your signal. That's barely touching the strings. Double tracking effects are achieved in the studio by running two tape decks simultaneously that are offset from each other in time. And the amount of offset in time will determine the type of effect ranging from through zero flanging at very short delay times to tape chorus effects and doubling effects at slightly longer offset times. Past that, there are slapback echoes and longer tape delays as the offset between the two decks is increased. The parameters that the engineers manipulated to create variations on these effects were the relative mix level of the, the two decks, the offset in time between the two decks, the way that the two decks were summed, whether one of the decks had a phase inversion or whether they, they were summed in phase or variation of those. And then also they could manipulate one of the decks flanges to create a sense of motion beyond just the static offset of the deck. And that was how you would get some interesting through zero flange sounds and nice chorus uh, type of sounds as well. Deco gives you the ability to manipulate these same parameters as well with the lag time knob, which controls the relative offset between the two decks, the blend knob, which controls the relative mix between the two decks, the blend type switch, which will determine the way the decks are summed. They're either in phase in some mode, lag deck is inverted relative to the reference deck in invert mode. And in bounce mode, we borrow the lag deck from the other channel to add an extra repeat. And then the wobble knob adds some random variation to the speed of the lag deck, similar to manipulating the flange with your hand as the decks are turning. So let's check out some of the sounds here, starting with the blend knob in the middle, which is equal amounts of reference deck and, and lag deck. We'll turn the wobble back, we'll go to some mode, and we'll start with the minimum lag time where now the lag deck is actually slightly ahead of the reference deck in time. So there you hear what's uh, essentially a comb filter created by the offset in time of the two decks. As I increase the lag time, you'll hear the lag deck will slow down to become synchronized with the reference deck at the zero mark on the, on the knob. So now the two decks are essentially in phase so that there should be very minimal effect on your tone. As we continue turning the lag deck further, we'll hear more of the combing as the two decks become further apart. Continuing further, we get to distances that are, will create a doubling and then slapback sounds. So there you can just hear a slight separation between the, the two decks. So 
now we're getting into slap back levels of, of offset. A little further delay. At maximum, there's a 500 millisecond delay. Which is further than you would get in traditional double tracking effects, but we thought it'd be nice to extend the range of that knob. So that's the range of the lag time and the sounds you get with the blend knob set in the middle for equal amounts of reference and lag deck. If we turn the blend knob all the way clockwise, then we'll just be hearing the lag deck, so we won't hear any of the reference signal. And if we move the lag time to minimum, now we've got, we're listening just to the lag deck, where we'd be able to add in some wobble to get a pitched kind of a vibrato effect in a, a randomized way. reduced to be very subtle, so now you just have very slight variations. We'll see what happens as we bring the blend back to 50-50. It'll work with the lag deck in order to now create flanging sounds with a little bit of, of wobble as the engineer would manipulate the flange of the reel. I'm going to put a little saturation on there to add some harmonic content to show the flange a little more uh, clearly here. For the most intense flanging effects, you'll want to set the blend right at 50-50 so the two decks can cancel and complement each other uh, fully. So there's a pretty big difference you get by just adjusting the blend slightly to favor the reference deck, where now the cancellations and reinforcements from the two decks won't be absolute because the decks aren't equally summed. So if you want a, a more of a mellow flange effect, you can still get that by just uh, adjusting the blend. If we switch the blend type to invert, then we'll have a negative through zero flanger, which is a very different sounding effect as the frequencies that are canceled and some are now swapped. So there you hear complete cancellations when the two decks are aligned and, and summed with the lag deck inverted in phase. So if, again, we can make use of the blend knob to mellow that out if you want the tonality of a through zero effect without complete cancellation, one way we can do that is to reduce the blend a little bit. Another way we can do that, if we want the intensity of the effect but without full cancellation, we go back to setting the blend at 50-50 and increase the lag time beyond zero. So now the lag deck will approach zero but won't actually cross through zero and we can then have the full intensity of the flanging effect but it won't actually cross zero. If we increase the wobble further we'll get excursions that are a little wilder. If we 
increase the lag time further and use the wobble knob, we'll get some nice tape chorus type of, of effects. Again, using the blend knob, we can vary the intensity of the effect. Make it very subtle there. Now the bounce mode uses the lag deck from the right channel, which is always active, and sums that back into the left channel. So that creates a second repeat or a second lagged signal that in stereo will give you a nice stereo effect and in mono will still uh, will create a fatter sound and at longer delays will give you a second repeat. We'll uh, explore that in a little bit. Here in bounce mode we'll hear what kind of stereo chorus spread we get. Compare that with invert. Very nice stereo field there. Increase the lag a little further. It creates a very wide stereo chorus at that point as we increase the lag time. Now we're getting a doubling chorus. And reduce the blend to Level that out a little bit. Going further into slapback delays, we can take advantage of something that happens in a physical slapback if a wave is reflecting off a back wall is the wave actually gets inverted as it bounces back. And that's something we can create with the invert mode to have the echo come back out of phase from the uh, dry signal. Comparing that to some is a very subtle difference. But it is something that does give you kind of a sense of a little extra depth, I think, when you're uh, in invert mode for the slap sounds. And in bounce mode, we'll get that uh, second repeat. If we go back to invert mode, reduce the blend, now we will have a control over the, the repeat level. So it's very subtle there. It's hard to tell it's on until you turn it off. Just gives a little extra depth and dimension there. And you can Turn the wobble down for just a straight slap without any motion on it. Increasing the lag time further, we can get delays that will be suitable for a little bit of a lead fattening or, uh, or you know, just a little rhythm uh, enhancement. bounce mode again to get the extra repeat and fatten that up a bit. Increase the wobble more for a little more modulation depth. Go to maximum delay time. Even reduce the blend more to reduce the lag deck and just have a little bit of faint call back from the lead line. A 
let's increase the saturation effect to its maximum to get kind of a, a lead tone going on right here. <laughs> 